okay this is not the video i thought i was going to be recording today but sargon the great is so good in rise of kingdoms that we just we have to talk about it i have to give you guys all of my thoughts as you can see i've already brought him to level 60 he's 5511 some of the initial reports coming out of him are extremely promising so today we're going to cover all the best pairs for him some talent builds that i'm considering and i'm just going to say up front if you're an infantry main you must max sargon he is an absolute must have and if you're a whale that likes to swarm down structures he's also a must have if you're in osiris league he is a must have commander he is extremely good and i'll explain why with some of the commander pairings that we're going to get to later in the video so make sure you stick around for that now what's going on with sargon right because a lot of people saw this active skill and they said sargon is garbage he's not going to be used he's completely trash and everybody wrote him off from the beginning because he deals skill damage over time and when sargon was first leaked i said he will be a must max for infantry players but everybody else was like hey listen damage over time sucks so what i said was okay i'm gonna wait for him to come into the game and we'll see what we'll see what actually happens because maybe the damage over time isn't very good and then the text changed on sargon's second skill and everybody was crying nerf everyone was saying oh my god as if sargon couldn't get any worse they just nerfed his second skill and what changed was that before it read that every normal attack would inflict a 100 probability of giving the odd effect on the target which causes them to take three percent more skill damage for 10 seconds but now the text was changed to when dealing skill damage so everybody saw that and thought oh my god he's only going to be dealing five stacks over time that's complete garbage total trash and things were not looking good for our boy Sargon okay but again I wanted to wait for him to come into the game and this change to this second skill was actually a buff it was actually a buff and this is exceptionally good for Sargon and so today we're going to talk about why okay the reason that this is so good is because it doesn't matter which commander is dealing skill damage and it also does not have to be active skill damage so what do I mean by this well Sargon obviously deals skill damage over time with his primary skill and this is going to inflict stacks based on this second skill however if you pair him with somebody like Guan Yu who also has skill damage here which happens to be AoE this will also inflict the odd debuff to the target so Guan Yu hits three enemies all three of those enemies will gain a stack of the three percent skill damage taken increase for 10 seconds assuming that it's a guan sargon pairing now what i found funny is that all the way back in august of 2021 i made a video talking about five new commanders that should be added to rise of kingdoms and in that video i talked about a hypothetical robin hood and as a hypothetical active skill i said wouldn't it be cool if he could apply poison stacks just like tomiris but in an aoe fashion and later in the video i said actually that might be a little bit too broken well as it turns out Lilith must have saw that video and said you know what that's actually not too broken we're gonna make Sargon deal AoE poison stacks that's basically what's happening here except the odd debuff is actually separate from poison meaning the odd debuff on Sargon stacks from what we can tell with Tamiris's poison stacks so it's even better than what I actually initially thought although he has to be paired with someone who does their own AoE but it actually gets even better and the reason for that is because not only is Guan Yu going to give AoE skill damage taken debuffs when he's paired with Sargon but he's also going to give an additional skill damage taken debuff to his target if his fourth skill procs this has a 50 percent chance of not only dealing a solid damage factor but also giving them another stack of that odd buff now unfortunately this doesn't work with things like the damage over time effect on CPO's third skill which is unfortunate I don't know why mathematically in the back end I don't know why it doesn't actually trigger it but the fact that you can add stacks with things like Guan Yu's fourth skill is absolutely insane now it's probably the case and I haven't tested this myself but it's probably the case that the damage factor on Alexander will also add a stack although I'm thinking that a Sargon Alex probably isn't the best pair and again we'll talk about pairs later but it doesn't end there because the expertise on Sargon gives you another way to add a ton of stacks to your target so when Sargon's army is hit with a normal attack it has a 50 percent chance to give two stacks of odd on an enemy target now 
it's a little bit unclear and we need to see some more testing but it appears to be the case that the two stacks could be applied to any target that's dealing normal attack damage to sargon so for example if you're hitting one target and you're being surrounded by two targets there's three armies that are hitting you in that scenario and any one of the three could potentially get these two stacks by looking at initial reports that seems to be the way that this actually works it could be the case that if you're swarming a sargon army then it just increases the number of stacks it's giving the one target that sargon is hitting but again i don't think that that's how that it works however if that is how it works it's going to make sargon rallies even more insane which we're not even going to talk about rallies in this video but trust me sargon rallies will be a thing now with all these different ways to add stacks the enemy is going to be taking a ton of extra skill damage but on top of that when they hit 10 stacks you deal a 1000 damage factor and there is zero cooldown on this not only is there zero cooldown on this but every time that it happens you gain a 300 damage factor shield and if we jump back to the expertise skill if you actually inflict the two stacks the double stack of awe when you have that shield you're also going to add another stack now this does have an eight second cooldown so this is going to be a little bit more rare but imagine removing all 10 stacks dealing a thousand damage factor you gain a shield i'm pretty sure that this skill damage also adds a stack because of his second skill right anytime you deal skill damage there's a hundred percent chance of adding a stack so merely the fact that you're removing the stacks will actually add a stack to the target but on top of that you could also add three additional ones because of that shield which means on the very next turn you could be at four stacks so you go from 10 it's not like you go from 10 stacks you remove them deal skill damage and then you're at zero stacks no you deal a skill damage and then there's the chance that you're right back at four and remember there is no cooldown here there is no cooldown to this fourth skill which again is why i think sargon might actually get a nerf or, or maybe lilith didn't realize that this is how it was working or maybe maybe they didn't intend for this to be as as broken as it is but even if you don't get that bonus stack here you're still going to go from 10 stacks to three so they go from taking 30 percent more skill damage not to zero but to nine or maybe even 12 depending on that shield proc additionally with this expertise and the fact that it has the chance to give anyone hitting Sargon a, a debuff of skill damage taken, you really don't want to swarm down Sargon. Like if you see him in the open field, it's probably in your best interest to just not hit him because you have a chance of just getting debuffed by, by even touching the Sargon one single time. So either when you see a Sargon, you're just going to let him one V one somebody, which let me tell you based on the testing that Chiskel did in a live stream yesterday, which if you missed it, I'm going to link it down below because there were some really interesting things in that live stream and huge shout out obviously to Chiskel. But if Sargon is one V one him pretty much no matter who you pair Sargon with, he's going to win the 1v1. That was one of the things that was discovered in the duels that Chiskel was doing. Sargon with CPO, Sargon with Chook is probably going to win that 1v1. So with this deterrent on the, on the, on the expertise, um, if you let him 1v1 people, you win the trade. If you swarm him down, you have to hit him with so many targets to sort of spread out those stacks and just melt him as quick as possible. Because if you do like a 2v1, then he's still going to be giving some nice debuffs to both of you guys. And that's not to say that Sargon's unkillable. Obviously he, he absolutely is, but I'm just saying that there is a, there's a built in deterrent to swarming him which is really really nice especially if you want to pair him with somebody that typically gets swarmed down such as alex or somebody like cpo for example if you see cpo in the open field typically you want to swarm him down but if you have a sargon in front of him not only do you get the skill tree but you also kind of maybe you don't want to touch that cpo but if you don't the cpo's active skill aoe is just going to be spreading around those odd odd debuffs with the with the three target aoe so it's it's actually insane again i i don't know if they're going to nerf sargon i hope they don't um because he is exceptionally good if you're a whale who swarms things or an infantry main yet you, you have to have sargon so with that being said let's talk a little bit about talents here for him before we jump into different commander pairs this is the talent that i'm going to start with here because what you want on sargon is the absolute best rage edge rage engine that you can have okay getting feral nature here typically from my from my discovery 
uh, typically you don't need feral nature on most commanders um but for sargon it's like i'm gonna test it out i'm actually gonna test it out because again you want to get those those stacks going as soon as possible so you can start getting the thousand damage factor from the fourth skill and you want to get him rolling okay and you want to get him rolling as fast as possible because he does do damage over time and the, the faster you start dealing that damage the less likely they will run away so that's why i'm grabbing feral nature on sargon above all else obviously we grab hold the line we grab the extra health here and i put two points into march speed this is what I'm going to be testing first for Sargon, but you could also go the other way. You could go absolutely insane and go full infantry tree, only grab rejuvenate for the rage engine and then grab tactical mastery and heraldic shield. Obviously the, the versatility tree is useless. You can ignore that for pretty much every, everything. But one thing that I do want to mention, and it's something that we have to test is actually latent power, uh, latent power enhances the additional skill damage by 6%, which you're going to be dealing a ton of damage over time with Sargon. Now, what we do know is that the damage over time from Frederick and the damage over time from Ramses does benefit from the latent power the same is true for like cyrus zenobia minamoto even also kusunoki okay so i'm going to assume that latent power will actually buff sargon's active skill i think based on every other commander that works in a similar way this will probably increase the additional skill damage now i also don't know if this increases the damage over time for cpo um and the fact that cpo's damage over time doesn't give stacks and sargon's does makes me think that they are calculated differently so i think it's unlikely that sargon's active skill and cpo's damage over time both benefit from this but if they do then a sargon cpo combo absolutely you want latent power absolutely it's going to be very good and in that case obviously you could see here um i went only two points into iron spear we came and grabbed feral nature and we put three points into latent power so it's pretty much uh just like this one over here except those two march speed points and one of the iron spear go into latent power and that's how that works so anyway we'll have to do some testing to see but uh those are the three talent builds that i am considering right now i kind of hope that i can use latent power i i just want to use it on one commander right anyway let's talk about some commander pairs for sargon because this is where his implementation into the game is super interesting and again, one of the reasons why I said infantry players will absolutely want to max him. Okay. Because he's so good. Even if he's not CPO prime, right? Even if he's, even if you can argue that he's not as good as CPO, he's still so much better than the other commanders that we have for infantry that you pretty much have to max him. Now in this portion of the video, I'm probably going to ramble a little bit. So just, I apologize, but I'm kind of just showing you my train of thought here. Okay. So right now, what we have typically is Guan CPO. That is like the cream of the crop, the best infantry pair. And I would say if you are not an infantry main, then you probably don't need to max Sargon. I think it's in everyone's best interest to have the most number of Sargons in your alliance as possible for swarming structures and for just spreading out AOE Sargon debuffs in the open field. I think that is just the more of you that have him, the better. But if you only have one infantry pair, this is still probably the way that you want to go. However, there is definitely some cases where you may prefer Sargon. Now, Sargon's implementation into the game really changes things up, right? Because if you're an infantry main, you're probably doing something like this with a Pakal Herald, right? That's probably something that you're using or, or maybe a Martel Herald if you're, if you're free to play or something like that, or an Alex Herald, if you want the extra damage. And then your third army is kind of weak, right? And so a lot of what a lot of infantry players are doing is they're taking away CPO and we're doing something like this and then, or obviously Leo could possibly be there. And then they're putting Honda or Mehmed or something like this behind their CPO. And they're kind of running, you know, these, these marches here. This is kind of what the infantry meta and the infantry mains have been doing, but Sargon completely flips this on its head. Okay. First of all, Leo is over. Leo's over. I, I, I'm sorry. I just, I don't think he's a thing anymore, but Chuck is, uh, is, is maybe getting a new spotlight here. Okay. So let's just, let's just break this down a little bit for you guys. Okay. I still think that Pakal Herald is the way that you want to use Harold. I think that that has not changed. Uh, that is pretty much the way that you want to go. Now, one thing that you could do is you could leave your Guan CPO alone. And if you're one of the crazy people who expertise Chuk, this is probably the three army, uh, lineup that you want to consider. Now, the reason that this, this only works by the way, if both Chuk and Sargon are expertise. And the reason for that is because the expertise on Chuk is giving him an AOE. Now, 
I'm pretty sure this AOE is in a half circle. I, I don't remember exactly because I'm I'm only at five 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 one. Uh, but I'm pretty sure this is a half circle AOE. And when you parry your Chook with your Sargon, a couple of things happen. One, Chook gains the benefit of the skill tree that you have on Sargon, who's primary. Second thing is that people probably are going to learn pretty quick not to swarm Sargon and that's going to benefit your Chook because he's going to be left alone the third thing is that this expertise is going to AoE spread the stacks from Sargon's second skill so that just adds even though the damage factor on this is relatively low it's basically just a way to spread that odd effect around the open field you also have some really nice single target damage factor here obviously not as good as you know other commanders in the game but it's it's there and you're also going to give a ton of extra attack to sargon which honestly he kind of needs right he gains 10 percent attack he gains 10 percent defense and i'm pretty sure he gains what 20 percent healthier yeah 20 percent healthier as well so he doesn't actually have that much attack and so the the chuck pairing is actually pretty good synergy here as well as the fact that it's making him a little bit more tanky okay you're reducing the skill damage that you take and you're also increasing the skill damage that you're dealing now the problem with this pairing uh, I think honestly it's it's pretty good I, I'm, I'm gonna wait to see how Tarek actually performs in the open field but I might actually expertise my Chook instead of Tarek for this specific combination now most of you are not gonna have Chook okay even in infantry mains probably won't have him and maybe you're just not excited about his AoE being being such a low skill damage okay so we can put Chook aside for a moment what are we gonna do in this scenario well one thing that I mentioned from the very beginning is a Guan Yu Sargon and it actually turns out that this is even better than I originally thought here's why okay the shield from Sargon that he procs when he removes the stacks from the target on his fourth skill so for those of you who have a 5155 Guan this is you're gonna miss out on the synergy here but whenever he gains a shield you gain 15 percent increased scale damage for three seconds that's really good if it doesn't apply to Guan Yu's AoE in that moment it'll probably apply to at least some of the damage over time for Sargon which is very good so you're gonna gain some some nice benefits from that but also think about what Guan Yu needs and what Guan Yu is getting from CPO right the reason the Guan Yu CPO pairing is so good there's a lot of reasons obviously but one of the reasons is that Guan Yu needs a little bit of tankiness okay and you're gaining the the 20 percent increased health from Sargon and he also gives you 10 percent increased infantry defense as well plus additional damage so the little bit of tankiness that you normally get from your Scipio is also there on Sargon he also with his expertise reduces the skill damage that Guan Yu is going to take by 15 percent okay this is a very good expertise so if you're considering Sargon you probably want to take him all the way so this pairing right here okay gives you massive AoE which not only deals the damage and silences with Guan Yu but it's now also going to spread three stacks of that auto effect the three different targets that you're hitting when those stacks hit 10 you remove them deal skill damage gain a shield which gives your Guan Yu additional skill damage and on top of all that again you have the infantry health defense skill damage taken reduction by 15 percent this pairing here is exceptionally good it's exceptionally good and I love it if you do that okay what are you going to do with CPO well you could do what you've always done with CPO and you could put him with somebody like Mehmed or you could put him with somebody like uh, Honda right infantry mains can consider the Chuck here as well I actually think Tarek could be really powerful with CPO and I think for me these these are probably the three armies that I'm leaning towards and it might even be a Tarek primary CPO secondary I'm not sure about that I like the rage engine on the support tree here with CPO uh, but having him hide behind Tarek might actually be really beneficial but also CPO primary means that the absolutely massive nuke that's going to come from Tarek is going to hit during the health reduction debuff from CPO so this honestly could be the, the three pairs that I run this could absolutely be it the other thing that I want to talk about right is Alexander the Great okay because Alexander the Great we already know is going to be getting a buff with the museum coming very very soon this is could come in the next one month three months six months whatever but we know that a uh, season two commanders are getting a museum buff now if you get some sort of really nice uh, you know defense buff or, or or health buff on on Alexander the Great well you could absolutely consider something like this where you can consider you know having these three these armies right leave your guan Yu cpo alone just do double aoe be insane have your sargon here make it so that way you know with sargon maybe you don't want to swarm him down so you have alex behind him alex doesn't like to be swarmed anyway maybe if he gets a nice little buff that'll be you know even better but um this would be a very supportive march right you're going to be spreading the odd debuffs to a ton of different targets alex's debuff uh the active skill debuff on alex makes three targets take 30 percent increased damage 
he also gives shields right so there's just so much to love about this pairing but again I think the problem with Alex right now is that he does need that museum buff he needs a little bit of a museum buff to make him uh, a little bit more viable now you could do Sargon with Tarek if you want to leave this again the Guan CPO combo leave that alone uh, the problem with this is that you really want AoE on Sargon and I think I've made that very clear um I think as a rally this would be absolutely a devastating rally we're not going to get into that because I don't have any you know rally reports or anything like that but this is absolutely going to be an infantry rally that is run uh, just no no question right no question uh but for open field I don't think that that's the way you want to go now you might be thinking that a Sargon Herald is going to be insane or even a Sargon YSG because they both have circular AoE and that is true but I think that these two commanders are just too uh too squishy for for Sargon I just I don't think that you really want to go that route so I think what we're looking at here for me as a player this would be probably the best case scenario because then we finally get to use a, a chook for something and and be useful um but realistically assuming that that is not going to happen uh and assuming that Alex does not get a powerful buff I think what I'm going to do is probably something like like this I think this is probably going to be the three infantry armies that I that I choose to run I think we are no longer going to see Martel Chuck is going to be a big question mark basically okay um so again I think for me this is going to be the three infantry pairs that I'm using in rise of kingdoms moving forward and I think Sargon is the reason he's the one that changes everything okay uh, because all three of these pairs are a little they have a, at least a little bit of tankiness in the case of a call it's a lot but all three of them have aoe all three of them have some sort of debuff in the case of pakal herald it's not really a debuff it's just so much counter attack damage that you don't want to hit them right and i think that honestly th this is this is the way to go okay i think this is the way to go i think you could possibly make the argument that cpo sargon is the better play I think if you do that though what are you pairing your guan with i think that leaves your guan extremely vulnerable the only things that you could consider would be something like this i i don't like leo i'm sorry i'm 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 joining dragothian uh, i'm kind of anti leo at this point i think he's just way too outdated and there's no signs of him getting a buff on the horizon so again this is like what, what are you going to do with your guan right that <clears throat> these are the options that you have so even though a sargon cpo might be better than a guan sargon I think from a complete package perspective, if you're building three armies, I think as a complete three army setup, this is probably better, right? So really it just comes down to how many armies are you actually building? But if you're building two armies, um, and you don't have Pakal Herald, you might actually just skip Pakal Herald these days. If you only care about two infantry marches, I mean, you might not even need them realistically. Maybe you would do like a, a Herald here with CPO. I mean, you could do something like that. I mean, that makes your CPO a little bit more squishy, but crazy, uh, damage output basically. But yeah, at the end of the day, these are the three pairs that I'm considering. I'm probably going to do and run these as my three inf infantry marches and then just be done with infantry for a long time if I could save the sculptures for Tarek and just go expertise with my with my Chook and then do something like this I think that would be incredible as well I think this would probably be the best case scenario this would save me the most sculptures but we'll just have to wait and see how good the expertise Chook is with with Sargon and if it's worth it maybe I just won't expertise the the Tarek guys I know that I've rambled a ton in the second half of this video so I do appreciate if you made it all the way to the end here consider subscribing to the channel it really helps out the channel a ton click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on Sargon did he exceed your expectations I mean he is the best duelist it seems in rise of kingdoms 1v1 he can't really be beat so I'd love to hear your thoughts down below don't forget to drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on the arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace